Have you ever stopped to think about how a horse learns? Have you spent hours and hours getting frustrated while trying to get your horse to learn a new trick and he just ignores you? Well then, let's stop for a bit to understand how a horse's mind works. I'm Maju and ask you this, how do horses really learn? First of all, horses are prey animals and unlike other prey which have defensive parts like quills, horns or claws, the horse's defense mechanism is mostly flight. That shows even today with horses of all breeds and functions. Horses are cautious and alert by nature. We need to understand these features to even begin a basic training of the animal. In general, most new challenges to a horse might at least cause a low level of stress, and we must be patient to show him that the experience is not linked to anything bad. Of course, there's always the individual variation. Some horses are more reactive than others, that's why it's so important to evaluate each horse by itself. As every conscient being, horses learn mostly by association. There are many different techniques that use this form of training, but the origin of these methods comes from the classical conditioning and operant conditioning. Have you ever heard of those terms? What are they really? The classical conditioning is known mostly by Pavlov's experiment, in which dogs were evaluated, and after a bell ring, the dogs received food. As time goes on, it's noted that when the bell rings, the dogs immediately start salivating because they know they're about to eat. With horses, that principle works the same way. With conditioning, they associate some sign to something that happens. Using the same example, horses in stalls get agitated when they hear someone walking inside the barn because they know it's someone bringing in their grains. That can also be used for training sessions. The operant conditioning uses the association to get a specific behavior from the animal. For example, a rat is exposed to a button and every time it presses the button, it gets fed. A good example with horses is the target. For those who don't know the target, it's a method of training that involves some easily discernible object like a ball or a colorful foam glued to a long stick so there's a good distance between the horse and the trainer. The objective is to get the horse to touch the target with its nose, and when it does, it gets a reward. That proves to be quite efficient while training horses that are afraid of moving somewhere, like in a stock or a truck. Both of these methods are very useful to train horses in a more humane way. For many years, horses have been victims of abusive training methods, which don't allow them to learn comfortably. Luckily, this has been changing quite a bit. Today, people are more worried about training horses in humane ways, and that has been showing a big change in the resulting animal's behavior. Horses end up more docile, more cooperative, and in many cases show a better performance than horses trained with aggressive manners. Horses trained with ethical methods are also much more predictable and trustworthy than horses brutally broken. It's common that horses trained with violence are oppressed when they show any sign of pain or discomfort, so they learn to not show any kind of different behavior up until their limit is reached, and that's when we hear, that horse bit me out of nowhere. Within training methods using the association, there are four types of training that may or may not be used together. These methods are positive reinforcement, negative reinforcement, positive punishment, and negative punishment. But what does positive and negative mean? Does it mean good or bad? Nope. Positive means addition, while negative means removal. Positive reinforcement is a very utilized method for many different animals, including zoo animals, and is the use of rewards in return for a specific behavior. Animals are very motivated by food, so most of the time they are willing to do a lot of things to get rewarded. However, it's important to understand that the reward should only be given after the behavior is shown, and that is, if the animal receives a signal to do so. It's common to see that one horse that begs for food, scratching the ground or kicking the stall door. 
This behavior was created by the wrong use of treats, when someone feels sorry for the animal and gives in to give it some food. One kind of reward that does not involve food at all is the good old scratchies. Some horses love being scratched on the neck, with their forehead, and it's worth seeing if and where your horse likes being scratched at. The positive reinforcement is very efficient, so it's important to determine the wanted behaviors and use it the right way. Negative reinforcement is pretty efficient while riding, but it's also used in many stages of the training of horses, even while young. Its concept is pressure relief, so an unwanted pressure is made, may it be a kick with the leg or a pull on the reins or halter, and when the horse makes the wanted movement, the pressure is immediately relieved. The leg kick, for example, must make the horse go forward. When the horse moves, the kicking stops. A very common problem is the constant use of pressure for slow horses. So the horse stops understanding the pressure as a sign to make a movement. With leg kicks, if they kick me both moving and stopped, so why should I waste energy? Positive punishment is the reprimanding of a horse when it makes an unwanted behavior. For example, the use of whips. In general, negative experiences are more remarkable than positive ones, so the punishment, if used, should be done with caution. The correction must be firm, but never aggressive. Before thinking of using the positive punishment, you must understand if the bad behavior has any cause behind it. We must also keep in mind that the punishment should never be cruel. In a horse's early life, it's common for the mother to punish her foal for any behavior that she deems wrong, thus showing him that this behavior should not be repeated. Negative punishment is the removal of something pleasant for the animal, and it's less used in horses. The best example for this method does not involve humans, but a group of horses, in which when there's any kind of conflict, the leader animal pushes the troublemaker away. Horses are herd animals and feel safer in a group. By putting the horse away from the others, it will be uncomfortable with the isolation and the leader will only let it come back when it shows itself submissive and calm. Those techniques come from association and conditioning and can be used with any horse, may it be a pleasure horse, work horse or sport horse. Welfare is a very questioned topic within sport, both because of the horse's daily life and how it's trained. So there's always that question, am I mistreating my horse by practicing a sport? The answer is, depends. Depends on how it's trained, how it's handled, and many other factors that should be considered. Generally, sports do cause some level of stress, but stress, unlike what most think, is not necessarily bad. Stress is nothing more than a physical response from a body to a stimulus. When an animal is exposed to a new situation, be it good or bad, the body produces a mix of hormones like adrenaline, cortisol and noradrenaline, and that's perfectly natural. Any change in routine or ambient will cause a level of stress, and even animals that live in the wild without any contact with humans are exposed to stress at some point. May be a fight between stallions, a foal that was scolded by its mom, search for food and water, some possible predator or threat, or even a spook. Stress is part of everyone's lives, even animals. So it's up to us, trainers and riders, to perceive that stress value and try to reduce it as much as possible. While exposing a horse to new situations, we must be patient and give it time to learn. During a training session, we should never ask for a move or command for too long. The horse needs a certain time to rest and understand what it did, so it associates that behavior to the command. It's also important to keep in mind that each horse is different. One horse will learn faster than the other, and that's okay. It's normal. We can't be upset because Pejipano is taking longer to learn than Spirit. Each horse is different, and so are us. Everyone has a different method. But as a whole, we must remember the concepts of association, conditioning, reinforcement and punishment so that more and more horses may have a more comfortable and happy life, while we can still enjoy its many qualities. It is possible to train horses ethically, 
Unfortunately, the mindset of trainers and riders around the world are changing more and more, and for the better. Thank you so much for your attention. This video was produced for the Bitless Day in Brazil, and I decided to make a translated version so it can reach more people around the world. I hope you enjoyed it. See you next time. Bye-bye.